video is something I would have benefited from in my worst days with tinnitus. There were so many questions I couldn't get answered and I was googling things all the time. I didn't know what to do. That's why today's video is about all of the things I wish I knew in my worst days with tinnitus. And there's so many things that I know now that I wish I knew back then because it would have changed my whole life. So if you're experiencing a ringing, hissing, humming, or any other different noise like that, keep listening. If you're new here, I am Karis Lown and I've had tinnitus my whole life. And it didn't really start to affect me until I started going to uni, where I realized this ringing is actually seriously annoying. And I didn't know what to do about it for a while, but I'm at the point now where I'm living happily with it. It hasn't gone away. I'm not gonna give you any cures because there is no cure. But there are ways to change your mental response to tinnitus and that's exactly where I am now. In my worst days of tinnitus, what angered me the most was having constant fluctuations and spikes. What I wish I knew back then that I know now is that I should have been logging these spikes all of the time. When I began writing down when I was having my tinnitus spikes, I noticed a pattern and it was every single time I came back from a night out. From this stage, I was like, so what's causing me to have these spikes? Is it the alcohol? Is it the lack of sleep? Is it, I don't know, the excitement? Or is it because I'm not wearing hearing protection? And the more I did some research into it and read up on what could possibly be causing this, I realised it's all of the above. The main thing was the hearing protection for me. So with alcohol, my tinnitus does spike a little bit and the same goes for like caffeine and lack of sleep, but not wearing hearing protection was a massive thing to make my tinnitus a lot louder. So if you're not already doing so, please just log your spikes. Once you notice that your tinnitus is spiking, even if it's like one of them ones where it's only for like 30 seconds at a time, just write it down, like put the time down, put the intensity, how it's making you feel, what you've done previously before that, what your possible like thoughts, initial thoughts could be about it. And you'll start noticing these patterns. Following on from spikes, Another thing I wish I knew was that they will go away. They're called spikes for a reason. You've got your normal frequency that's carrying on as it, as it normally does. And then you've just got a really loud, intense spike. And if it's your first ever spike, obviously that's going to be very scary because you're like, what is this? Is this my tinnitus now? Is it forever? Most likely, no, it's not forever at all. And it will go away, but it won't go away if you're constantly waking up and checking on your tinnitus it's not going to work like that and it might do one day you might wake up and it might be gone but if you're constantly waking up and thinking oh is my tinnitus still there is it still spiking you're just going to be fueling the fire you're going to be stressing yourself out and stress increases blood pressure which can interrupt your tinnitus look i'm not a medical professional but this is what i've heard and it's down to my experience as well whenever i wake up in the morning and i think to myself has my tinnitus completely disappeared no, it hasn't. But the more I think about that, the more I'm stressing myself out and it's just not worth it. If you're setting yourself new habits in the morning, so instead you're waking up and you're getting up and making breakfast or like getting up and doing some stretches, putting on a YouTube video, for example, rather than waking up and just sitting there and thinking, oh my God, like this is going to be a bad day. My tinnitus is still there. You need to make different pathways for your brain to follow. Otherwise, you're going to be in a constant cycle of not knowing what to do with yourself. You're going to be in a complete depression. And I've been there, like in my second year of university, I had so much going on with like studying, everything like that. And I'd wake up and I'd just blame everything on my tinnitus. I'd wake up and think, oh my God, I've got so much to do today. Oh wait, is my tinnitus still there? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm not going to do any work because of it. You know, I would blame all of the negativities on my tinnitus. And once I got out of this like blame and started to accept that my tinnitus isn't really going away, it's just chilling. Your life begins to change. I wish I knew the importance of goal setting and hobbies because now my life feels so much more productive because I've got these goals and I've got more hobbies than I did before. When I was really feeling depressed with tinnitus, I wasn't doing anything with myself. I had no goals, no ambition because I gave, I gave into it completely. I didn't wanna do anything. I didn't wanna socialize because I, I felt like it was such a pain. But once I found things to manage, I began living my life better. For example, a hobby I have at the moment is going to the gym. And I know that sounds extremely boring for some, but I felt like that like 
a month ago, okay? So a month ago, I, I could not be asked for the gym. It just wasn't it. But now I've set myself goals at the gym. I'm so excited to get up and go. Like, I'm really excited for it. Not only is the gym motivating me to get up and get on with the day, it's distracting me from my tinnitus and it's making me feel overall better in myself. So if you don't go to the gym, I highly recommend going because your physical health is going to reflect on your mental health so much. I wish I knew that my tinnitus impacted my mental health a lot because I would have, I don't know, at the time, you know, like when you're in a depression, you don't really want to do anything. But honestly, once you understand your mental health more, you will start doing things that you know can fight against it. Like for me, when my tinnitus was impacting my mental health, I called a mental health helpline and they were useful in the sense of go out for a walk and start listening to like how you're feeling and become the observer of your thoughts kind of thing, which is absolutely great. You've got to become the observer of your negative thoughts in order to make them more positive and understand them. And I realised, okay, I need to work on my mental health. I can't just keep giving into it. It's like a battle, you know? The one thing that pulled me out of feeling so depressed of tinnitus was a very small hobby at the time and that was cooking and I've spoke about it so much before but even if it's just like you're waking up in the morning and you're eating a meal prep you know that you made the night before it makes you excited and it makes you feel like you've accomplished something you've accomplished making this really tasty food you've, you've cooked this food it smells lovely it distracts your senses away from listening to your tinnitus you know, it's it's making you experience your other senses rather than just focusing in on your hearing. So if you know that you should have a hobby and you know it will benefit you from distracting you from your tinnitus, just start doing little things. Make little accomplishments, even if it's making your bed in the morning. At least then you're not going to get back in it. You're going to be less tempted. Another thing I wish I knew was when you go to an ENT, they're not going to help you and you're gonna feel like shit if you don't ask them the right questions. So for example, I went to my doctor and he said, there's nothing you can do, but let me refer you to an ENT to see if there's anything else we can possibly look into. And I was so excited. I waited ages and actually I waited so long that I couldn't be asked to wait anymore. So I had to go private. It was, I think at the time it was like a year and a half or something because it was locked down. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to go private because I was so desperate. Anyway, got to the point of seeing my ENT and they said exactly the same thing. Oh, there's nothing we can do. And I walked out of there feeling like I've been punched in the face. Like you're used to walking out of the doctors with an answer and with tinnitus, you don't get any if you don't ask questions. And I asked nothing. The only thing I really asked was, will it ever go away? And obviously the answer is no in my instance because I've had it all my life it's not very likely that I'm going to wake up and it's going to disappear and to be honest that'll be very scary you need to make a list make a list of questions you want answered what bothers you the most about your tinnitus yes it might be the noise but is it the fact you're wasting your day in bed or you can't get out of bed because your tinnitus is stopping you is it the fact tinnitus might be interrupting your conversations with people and you're having trouble socialising. And that was a massive thing for me. And if that is the case with not being able to hear people in conversations, then you could then ask the question, are hearing aids going to benefit my tinnitus? Or maybe you're even curious about hearing aids, like will hearing aids cure me? If you have these questions prepared for the ENT, you're gonna go in there raring to go. You're gonna get your questions answered. They're not gonna just say, mm, not too sure about that. They will tell you all of these questions, but they're not going to give you an answer to something that's obvious, like, is there ever gonna be a cure for tinnitus? They don't have a clue. They, they don't know that. Or is your tinnitus ever gonna go away? Well, if you're constantly longing for a cure, for example, if you're constantly longing that your tinnitus disappears, the likelihood of you reaching the point of not caring about your tinnitus anymore is going to be really slim because you're so fixated on wanting to find this complete end it all. If your tinnitus has came out of nowhere, you can ask the doctor, how can we find out what might be causing my tinnitus? Can we go through certain like things to see, like what's causing my tinnitus, certain tests? And they might refer you to an MRI, for example. And if your tinnitus is stopping you from getting out of bed, you can ask them, what little things can I do to change my lifestyle to help live my life happily with tinnitus? Because if you're living your life happily, you won't be longing for a cure so much, you know? Like, why would you need a cure 
if you're living happily and it's not bothering you. Obviously a cure would be great, but that's the next best thing. Let's talk hearing aids. I wish I knew that they wouldn't cure my tinnitus, okay? And that sounds silly, but a lot of you might be thinking as well, will hearing aids actually cure me? And they won't. They're not going to reduce tinnitus, but they might reduce your perception of it. For example, I've got my hearing aids and they help me most in social situations, for example. I'll be talking to people and my tinnitus just amplifies their like their voice and it makes me think about my tinnitus less. My hearing aids also have a Bluetooth option so I can have some music playing in the background whilst I can hear people perfectly talking to me. And that was something I really struggled with before I had hearing aids. I didn't know what to do with myself. I couldn't hear anyone literally in front of me. I couldn't hear them, especially on bad days, nothing. And that would really make me isolated and it would force me to just stay at home all day. Tinnitus UK, they have a helpline. They have a helpline for tinnitus, specifically for tinnitus. And I wish I knew about that because when my mental health was really suffering from my tinnitus, I called a mental health helpline and they didn't really know what to do. And to be honest, I didn't even know that it was my tinnitus causing my mental health at the time. I was so deep in a depression that I didn't care about anything, okay? But Tinnitus UK, if you know, which you will if you're listening to me right now, if you know your tinnitus is really mentally disrupting you, call Tinnitus UK because they have so many resources and so much advice to give you. Their helpline is free 10 until 4 on Monday to Friday. I'm just reading it on the website. The website is tinnitus.org.uk. And if you don't feel comfortable talking on the phone, they've also got a web chat so you can just text them on there. A big thing I wish I knew is that it's normal to not know what your tinnitus is caused by. I've had tinnitus my whole life and it always bugged me that I had no idea what it was caused by and I was terrified that it was going to kill me. But surely if my tinnitus is going to kill me, it's, it would have done it by now. Do you know what I mean? And if you've got these looming thoughts of like, oh my God, I'm so scared my tinnitus is going to kill me, which is extremely extreme. Look, if you're one of them people that's worried that your tinnitus is going to physically hurt you, go for an MRI scan. It's very rare that they'll find anything, but at least then it gets out of your subconscious and you can go about living your life without thinking this at the back of your mind. For example, I'm a very like moly person. I've got lots of freckles and things. And I was so scared that one of my moles was cancerous um, and it was playing on my mind so much. And I thought I was silly for even thinking that. Anyway, I went to the doctors and they said, it's completely fine. You don't need to keep worrying. I just felt instantly better. It was the biggest relief and I had been thinking about it for so long and it was playing on my mind constantly. Just get that peace of mind that you deserve. And it's not silly for thinking that it might physically hurt you. It's not silly at all. It's best to get it checked because then your mental health will just get so much better. But anyway, if you're like me and you still don't know what your tinnitus is caused by and you probably never will, it's completely normal to feel that way and so many people don't know the cause of their tinnitus. I've accepted it now that I'll probably never find a cause and it doesn't really affect me anymore because I know that I'm physically healthy and I'm mentally healthy now. So why is there the need to think about it so often? Like why is there a need to reminisce? Because even if it was something that happened, like a loud noise, it's happened now, do you know what I mean? It's happened, what can you do about it? It's not something that should be playing on your mind. The biggest, biggest thing I wish I knew that's completely changed my life from tinnitus is CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. And it's not something that you take, it's not a fake cure or a quick fix, it's nothing like that. And I had no idea what CBT meant, I had no idea what habituation meant. But once you look into it, you realise, okay, this can actually probably help me. When I was in my worst days of tinnitus, I didn't know how to cope with my negative thoughts. And CBT helped me retrain my brain to make my negative thoughts into more positive ones. So when my tinnitus started to spike, I was able to come at it with a positive outlook rather than a negative one. What really helped me understand tinnitus and CBT was the Otto app. This isn't sponsored in any way. This is just what helped me. So you can download it on the iOS, App Store or Android on the Play Store. And it's just a great starting point to understand your tinnitus and understand your emotions. It guides you through different exercises. It, it's brilliant. So if you don't know where to start with CBT, I'd highly recommend downloading a free app. 
so now when I get like negative thoughts about my tinnitus or I have a particularly bad day in public and I don't know what to do about it I just want to go home go in my bed and just stop my day altogether I've got this mental toolkit that I can just like dip into so for example when I'm particularly stressed out I do like a finger tapping thing or I do some breathing exercises or I just visualize a really calming place and that helps me so much. It helps me with everything. It doesn't just help me with my tinnitus. It helps me with just my mental health in general, like stressful situations. Following on with different management techniques, white noise is insane. I wish I knew that white noise would change my life forever. I, I've said this in my previous video. I've got like a little baby white noise, like teddy bear. And it plays like wave noises, static, all sorts of different things. And I play that every single night. So I'll go to bed and I'll listen to that. And if you're one of them people that wakes up because your tinnitus is so loud, getting a white noise sound that you really enjoy and matching it to your tinnitus, it's going to help you a lot because then your brain's going to be more focused on that sound and you're not going to be scared by your tinnitus. You're not going to wake up on this fight or flight mode. The final thing I would say that I wish I knew is that there's so many scams out there and if someone comments on your post and says oh yeah doctor blah 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 cured me he didn't mate he doesn't exist he's not real and he's just gonna scam you I actually spoke about this in my book the tinnitus cookbook and I messaged one of these scammers and I said oh like what are you selling is this actually going to cure my tinnitus he was like yeah 100 percent. it's 250 pound and I went oh can I see this cure and he was like yeah here you go and he sent me a picture of a plastic bottle filled with loads of different herbs that you can just buy on the market and it just goes to show that there is a huge desperation for a cure and if you don't know any better and you've like if you're not fortunate enough to be so like technology savvy like myself you, you can e easily fall for these things if it seems too good to be true do not give in do not buy it always going to be people out there trying to prey on you because we do want a quick fix don't we it's it's natural to want that but there isn't one the best thing you can do is go through cbt and get to the point of training your brain to think more positively get into the point of habituation you don't need a cure to feel happy you can be happy just with the power of your mind i really hope that this video has helped you in some way it's something that i wish i could have seen when i was in my worst days of tinnitus let me know which one helped you the most and please put in the comment if there's other things i missed out that's really helped you and you want others to hear if you're in a rush in the future and you can't watch my videos on YouTube, I've also got a podcast which I'll be putting this video on as well. And that's called Let's Talk Tinnitus on Spotify and Apple. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok as The Tinnitus Cookbook. So yeah, if you're not following me there already, please do so. Um, if you ever want a DM, I'm always there for a chat. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.